Hello there and welcome to another week in our very cold and windy garden. Now we've still got this wind from the east which is cutting wind, it's very very cold. The other thing is we've had no rain at all for oh, a couple of three weeks now but we are getting a frost every morning so it strains the weather at the moment. Now the, we're down on bed C, this is where we put the potatoes and I wanted to break the top up but we're having no rain, it's made it almost impossible to break these lumps up so as soon as the rain comes I'll start breaking these lumps up again and making it look a little bit better. But talking of potatoes, the potatoes in the frame are actually just poking through the top of the soil now I'll show you in a moment so I brought some water down now to pop the reds up we might as well give them a drink because it's been so dry so we'll have a look in there and then we'll see about putting some covers on these tunnels behind me okay let's have a look at these potatoes first There you are, you can just see the tops of the potatoes popping through, they're not long now, they'll soon, be, they'll soon be growing well. Even though it's been as cold as it is, they've still managed to send a shoot up. I'll just put a splash of water on the other side, just to soften the top more than anything. There's not a lot of water left, I'll have to fetch another one. There's one or two just popping through now, so I'll get some more water down and get them done again. Another one here, look. It will be important now to keep these covers down. If it threatens a, a, a bad frost one night, if to forecast it, I should just come down and put a fleece over it. But otherwise, they'll be fine. Now, I haven't done any work on the greenhouse site this week, but I have been working getting these tunnels ready. I'll just show you what I made a little bit different this season and then we'll pop a cover on this one okay Good. now with them being a lot shorter these tunnels I've actually put a cross piece in it's only a tile that because it's been tantalized they can't paint it if you put paint on to tantalized it will just wash off at the first rain so we'll have to leave them this color for this season then paint them at the end of the year I've put wires on I'll show you on this one, it's easy to show you. I put wires around the edge as normal. And on this particular one, this will be for the Brussels, which will be a little bit higher than those. So I'm actually not going to put the centre skirt to the floor. I'm just going to put it to that beam there. All the corners and edges, we put tape on so it doesn't catch on, on the net while it's moving about in the wind. It soon ladders this net and it's quite expensive. On this particular one I put string on instead of wire. What I've done, I've got the cover ready and I've already put it down the centre and pegged it with the other one to the soil. Now we just have to bring it over and peg it down. Now the tunnels have been used, as you can see the soil stains are on them but you'll find it's just around the bottom. The piece we want to be fine. I'll just pull it over. Now because I've pinned that side, that should be firm enough for me to start and square it on and then I'll get some pegs and we'll start from the middle and peg it in also with these covers being in there I think this particular one maybe four years now you will get some holes in them so I've purchased some clear outdoor tape which I can just 
cut a little square and put it on the holes to stop the white fly getting in. Now there's many different pegs available. Some are a little bit different from others at the top, but they're all basically the same. They don't last awfully long, so be careful I use them and they'll be okay. What I like to do, if possible, I like to put the middle one in first. You can always move them if they're not quite in the middle. But if you just hold it down, and then we'll start working the ends. I remember these covers are for the tunnels that used to stretch across the garden, so I'm going to be cutting quite a bit off. And put that there now, and you just just push them in for now, and then we'll tighten it up as we go. Right, I'll do that then. It's quite a job to do when it's windy. <laughs> Now the ends have got rather a lot at this end because there's some tears in it and I want, don't want to use that but for now I'm just going to get it down and if I can find the peg and just peg that down. If you pull the edges round it makes life easier. And so most of this will be cut off so it's not that big fine. In fact, there'll be quite a bit cut off on this one. Let's pull the edges round. This one will cut off there. And then we're just going to peg that down for now so we can tension the other side up. Now, as, as you can see, there's loads and loads of mesh here. So what I'm going to do is the same I've done on that one. It's just put it inside for the moment because I've forgotten to bring the scissors down again. So we'll just pin it for now. But we'll put this inside out the way. There's a nice piece of mesh there, you see, we'll save that. Just pop that in there. And then what we'll do, bring that round. And then we'll take that down, give it tension. Can you see the top tension in there? Right? And right now we gather those three up, getting a bit of tension on them all. And then for the ends, I use these big pegs that we actually get these from Aldi. And just push those in, hold it down. And you can see the tension in now coming on. Remember all that inside will be cut off in a short while. So we just tension it, like you would when you're doing the polyton actually. Just pull your tension down, don't pull too hard because you'll tear the corners, okay? And then we pop. We have three on each tunnel and it should hold it nice. Gather them up, pull it down to tension it. Watch you don't put the points through the mesh while you're doing it, it's quite easily done. And now we literally go to that end, tension it and tension the sides. So you finish up with a nice tight tunnel like that one. Once you've got your tunnel ready and cut the ends off, which I have done on this one yesterday, and then we can start planting it up. Now to get into it, we just lift one side over the top. So you just take the pegs out this side and lift this up and pop it over the top. There you are. See, now I put these in this morning, a few more to put in, 
but we'll put those in a moment. Those are cauliflowers in there. Put them in nice and firm and giving them a good watering. This side I'm putting in cabbages. Now these are golden acre which are a summer cabbage you know the small ones that make very nice coleslaw so we'll put because they're only small we're going to put 10 in there i think what i do i plant the cabbages with the bulb planter believe it or not i make holes like that and i find that easier on this land to plant them and then we can really firm them in this is same thing we use for the onions but i'll show you that in a short while we're putting six in each side if I don't hit a stone. This is the problem on this land. Right, we'll try again. Just in a little bit, look. Then we'll get. Like that. I'll just empty that. And. Um, here to keep it looking tidy not too deep now the nice little plants they've had a good two weeks in that frame over there outdoors so they've hardened up perfectly well but then again they're going into a, like a protective environment anyway i've grown these in these paper cardboard containers or whatever they are but i'm a little bit with using these so what i do is i tear the top off these have actually dried out a bit while they've been waiting for us and i pinch the bottom because if I just show you, if you plant them in these, just take that weed out, and they're above the ground level, this will start evaporating and draw the water actually from the root. So I just like to take the top off and just pinch the bottom like that. But that's probably just me. Right, because we've made that nice little hole look, that was the spare plant, so if one dies I can move that one across. And then push it in nice and tight. If you have trouble with uh, cabbage root fly, put your collar on now. But it's the same again, it's just a case of... These bits are not wasted because I put them on compost heap soon right down. And a pinch the bottom, in she goes, and then a really because of cabbages that really want to be tight. That this one's absolutely wet through, looks it's out the middle, but I still take that off and then pinch the bottom out, pop them in really, really tight. Those up tied to the soil for brassicas the better if you don't put them in tight what you find is as the cabbage grows up and this is weak it just flops over and it never really makes a good plant so if you put them in quite deep and then quite tight that's fine it's nice and secure now last one then in that hole and really tighten that soil up round that's it and we'll just give those a drink and we'll shut this tunnel down deep down in the soil there's plenty of moisture it's just the top that's so dry at the moment this time of year should be wet underneath. It's running in very quick. 
Now that's the cauliflower and the summer cabbage in. We'll put more cabbage in the next tunnel. Pop some kohlrabi in the centre one out the wind a little bit. But that'll be to follow this week. So next time we see you I should have all these tunnels finished and planted up except for the brussel sprout one which are not quite ready yet while we're waiting for these cabbages and cauliflowers to bulk up and cover the surface because there's odd spaces there what we'll do is we'll put a lettuce plant in between like a catch crop so we can get two crops out we'll have the lettuce out quickly and then let the cabbages and collies fill up and once they filled up you won't get nothing underneath then all right so i'll cover this up and get it pegged down then come to you and show you it done now that is the first tunnel planted up remember i'll drop a few lettuce in it inside especially at this side so we can harvest them easier this little wedge of garden when it's cleaned up a little bit and damped it down this is where we'll put the marigolds etc to help keep the uh, green fly away not only that it would look quite pretty because every spare space along the garden now will get some sort of bedding plant in it so we're not only growing vegetables we're actually helping the insects which will pollinate our vegetables so that's it for the tunnels for now i'll have to come down with the big scissors and cut those loose ends off but i say i will save those pieces of net they're very useful they'll i'm sure they'll come in somewhere now we need to go and put the onions in we've had them in that frame for three weeks now they're totally hardened up and so we'll get those planted i had been down early this morning and planted some there's a few more left to plant now we're on plot a this is the first quadrant that we're planting up these are the overwintered onions they don't look too bad they want hoeing and raking down a little bit but they're so dry these are the onions for this year i've set these this morning there's another row and two more trays to put in, but I'll show you how I put them in. Here's the bulb planter, and I take out not such a very deep scoop on them, and then I do the line with those, and I find it easier. And then these are the onions, this is actually rumba. And I've grown them in the greenhouse for a short while, and then put them in that frame at least three weeks so they've hardened up to the outside and what i do i just pop them out and pop them in to those holes like this now if you're taking them out and you're grabbing them by the neck like this be very very careful not to squeeze or bend this neck because your onion will just rot off okay so ever so careful I'll do five and then show you how I backfill. Very careful. Now, what we've got there, three, four, five. Let me show you what I'm doing. Here. And then I get the trowel and just go round them. Now, if they look a bit deep like that, don't worry too much because the onion will adjust with its roots push itself up or even pull itself down to adjust its own height walking on the ground a bit because the onions do like it firm and then just go around them with the trowel and then level up tidy as you go That's it. Oh. And there, so I'll put this row in 
a drop of water. It's just a case of settling them in. That's it, look. Now, these here are the rest of the rumler. You only got one line up there. So I'm going to put them in three lines here next to the broad beams that are doing rather well. I don't know if you can see them. I know they're a cold weather plant, but it's been rather cruel to them this week. They've stood well. Later today, I'll put these three rows of onions in. But in the meantime, my camera person wants a cup of tea because it's very, very cold. So we're going to nip up now and have a cup of tea. We'll see you in a bit. While we're passing the shed, I'll just show you that I've started potting up the overwintered fuchsias. I'll do the fuchsias first and then do the geranium. This is one of the pots and you can see how dry they are if I bang it. It nearly all comes off. But they are growing, so now we need to get them potted and then they'll fly away then. I'll just put that in there while we go and get Diane a cup of tea. I'll have all the fuchsias potted and show you them in the greenhouse next week and I'll show you potting the geraniums up, okay? Hello, we've had a cup of tea and we've come back out but the sun's come out with us and we've come in the greenhouse so I've had to take the coat off now. So we've gone from very cold to very hot. And it's amazing this spring weather we're getting. But we're in the greenhouse, just die or flick round and just show you how congested we are in here. We are potting the tomatoes up now to keep them growing. I'll take the cover off the propagator and let you have a quick look at the cuttings as we go past. And there's all the new seeds we put in, but we'll show you what we've put in. And we really are getting a little bit on the full sap. These are some of the tomatoes that are potted. They're, they're coming on very well now. I'll have to side shoot soon and put a little stick in just to give them a bit of support. Now the cucumbers are getting bigger and bigger, but we can't take them away from this propagator yet. If they get cold now, they'll just fall over. They're not very happy, but and they have been potted, they should be all right in a few days. The new leaves are coming well. If I just take this off and let you see the cuttings that are rooting. Not quite growing yet, but another week or so they'll be fine. There's a few tomatoes in there that were struggling, so I've put them into the heat a little just to give them a boost. A few more tomatoes that were potted there. Then there's two baskets with 20 in each, nearly ready for potting. The cuttings that we took the cuttings from are now showing new shoots, so they're quite happy in here. These are a few parsnips that I put into cardboard tubes just to see if they'll grow. There's only, there's only a dozen, we'll see how they get on with them. Seeds we put in are in these propagators, they'll be fine. It's just to put the propagators on top, just keep a little bit of sun off. There's a, a little bit of celeriac there that's nearly ready for potting on. Everything now seems to be doing fine with a lot of celery, but we do use a lot of celery and that's, that's coming along all right. Giving it as much light as I can to bring them on. A little bit of lettuce here. And obviously I have to fleece all this at night. I can't leave them open while they are getting these frosts. Putting in this week, there's a few red onions. They'll go down the garden. They'll put those straight in the ground. Likewise, the carrots, they'll go straight in. A few marigolds that I want to make the garden smile with. So they'll be put in here in the trays. Little gem. I've potted some little gem and I'll take those down and put them in the tunnels and but we need a follow-up batch. The carrots and the onions, spring onions, they'll go into the frame as well. Now we I've put the sweet corn in. Don't usually grow sweet corn, but being we've got the free seed, Diane says give it a go. So 
we'll see how we go with that. The rest of these, except for the basil, is more or less what we got free seed. So I thought we'll give it a try. And as I say, if they come through, they'll make the vegetable garden look pretty. And we'll put a few out. Hopefully the chickens won't eat them. Now in another fortnight, let's say the week after next, we'll start and put the beans and the peas in. We'll put those into root trainers. I've still got last year's root trainers. So I'll make sure they're all nice and cleaned up and ready to put those in. But that's a fortnight yet. Yeah? We haven't got to worry about that. I will pop these few seeds in we've got. There'll be quite a fair amount of tomatoes to pot up. There's the overwintered geraniums to pot up. Remember that I'll want like a sandier compost for those. So I'll have to mix that up ready. And we'll put the shelf in here and put those on the shelf like we normally do. So we're, we're in control just. We're just hopefully by next week we'll get some a little bit warmer weather. Although the sun keeps coming out and it got quite warm in here, it's gone in and when I go down the garden now to finish planting those onions, it's going to be quite cold so I'm going to put all my coat back on. That's it for this week. Many, many thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.